Hello and welcome back. In this session we're going to look at list views and we're going to take quite an in-depth view of them and the reason being is list views are a really powerful way that your users can find the right records. So a list view just shows a list of records, you have list view actions, you can apply filters and add charts, you can customize list views, you can refresh them and there's a couple of different types of list views and then we also have the settings side of it as well. But let's head into Salesforce and let's take a closer look together. So here we are in Salesforce and what we're going to do is we're going to open up the account tab. And what we're going to see here is the recently viewed list view. And this is our pinned list. If we click on the drop down, you can see that we have a number of list views. We have all accounts, my accounts and many more. And if we select the all accounts list view, we can see all of the accounts in Salesforce. And we want to make this our pin list. So a pin list is just your default list view that you see when you open up a tab. To do that, we just hit the pin and that has now pinned that list view. So what would happen is if we was to navigate to leads, for example, and come back to accounts, we're going to see the all accounts list view straight away. We can customize list views, which we are going to cover shortly. But for now, I just want to walk you through what we see here. So on the top right hand side, we have our list view actions and these can change depending on what objects list view you're on. But for now, you can see we have new, import and printable view. You can also create list view actions to provide more functionality to your users. Underneath that, we have the search box, which we can use to quickly find records in our list. And then we have a few buttons as well. And we're going to start on the right hand side. And that's where the funnel is. Now, this is our filter button. And if we open that up, you can see that we can add and remove filters to make our list of records more relevant. To add a filter, we just need to click add filter and then we could choose the field, the operator and the value. And then when we're done, we just hit done and that's going to filter them for us. So let's say we only want to see accounts where the type is customer direct. We would select the field as type. We would then select the operator as equals. And then for the value, we would select customer direct and we'll hit done. Next, we'll hit save. And as you can see, the list is updated with the filtered records. So filters are a great way for your users to focus only on the records that they need. You can apply more than one filter as well, and you can really refine those list views. And you can also include complex logic. So if you wanted to start using complex filter logic using and and or, then you can do that as well through here. But we're not going to dive into that in too much detail because you don't need to know it in order to pass your associate exam. For now, we're just going to remove that filter and we're just going to hit save. So it's just going to revert back to what it was. And let's close the filter down. Next, we have charts. And if we click this icon, we can easily add or remove charts and that just helps us visualize our data. We could choose which report that we want to use. So if we had multiple reports, we could choose whichever one it is that we wanted. And then we can also customize the chart type. So we can display it as a vertical bar chart, a horizontal bar chart or a donut chart. So let's get rid of that chart and let's talk about the pencil icon. And this is just what we can use to edit our list. So that's just to edit any records in our list. So we could say click that, for example. So we've highlighted that field and then we could click the pencil icon and that allows to edit it. Now, I don't generally use that to be completely honest with you, because I just find if you're already on the field anyway, then you might as well just click the pencil icon and just tap it there and update it and hit save. We also have the refresh button as well, and that's just going to refresh our list. We can also edit multiple records at one time. So if we wanted to change, say, the billing state for multiple records in one go, we could just check the boxes and then we could just make the change that we wanted to make. Now, this is called inline editing, and there are a couple of limitations around that. You can only edit up to 200 records in one go, and you also have to make sure that you're displaying one record type only. So that's the only limitations around it, really. The next button we have is the display as feature, and that allows us to change between a table view, a Kanban view, or a split view. We're looking at the table view at the moment, but let's open the split view just so we can see that in a little more detail. And as you can see, the split view is just like what we saw in the console navigation. Only this time, the records don't appear in the navigation bar if we open them. 
The split view is great to quickly work your way through a number of records and find what the record and the detail that you want fast. You can collapse or expand the split view just using the arrow and you still have access to all the list view actions at the top and you can still refresh it, but you don't have access to some of the other features that you would get in a table view. We also have a Kanban view, but to display the Kanban view correctly, I'm going to change to the opportunities object. So we're just going to go to the opportunities and we're just going to change this to all opportunities. And then I'm going to go across to display as, and I'm going to change that to Kanban. So what is it that we're seeing here? What is going on on our page? Well, at the top are our stages. So this is what opportunities are being grouped by. They're being grouped by the stage and you can customize Kanban views to group by whatever field you want, but it does have to be a pick list field. Underneath is where we have the summarized value, and that is just rolling up all of the amounts and totaling at the top in green. Again, that field is summarized and it can be changed to any other currency field. And to make changes, all we need to do is go to the gear icon and just hit Kanban settings. And we can then start changing just to how we're gonna group them and what we're going to summarize them with. But I'll just hit cancel and leave it as here. Now, before we dive into list view settings, I just want to finish off with what we can do with the Kanban view because it is really powerful. And one of the huge advantages of Kanban is that you can easily drag and drop records from one grouping to another. And as you can see, the summarized fields are automatically updating. Now, salespeople love this feature and it's a really visual way of seeing your data and seeing just you know how everything's going. So from a sales perspective, I can look at this, I can see where all my opportunities are, and I can see really just, you know, what I can expect in the coming weeks. But now let's head back to a standard table list view. And we're now going to talk about the gear icon, which is the list view settings. From here, we can create new list views, we can clone lists, we can rename them, and we can also delete them if we wanted. We can also configure the sharing settings. We can edit list filters, so that's just instead of using the funnel, and we can select the fields to display as well. Now, what's really handy is we have this reset column widths, and this is great if you've been messing around with your list view, resizing your columns, and you've made a complete mess of it, and it just doesn't look what you want it to look like. You can just reset it back to that. But let's start with creating a new list view. So if we hit new, what we're going to do is give it a list view name. So we're just gonna call this low value opportunities. When we click into the list API name, that's going to be automatically populated. And then we have this question of who sees this list view. So who should be able to see this list view? And we have three options. We have only I can see this list view, which means that only we can see it. We have all users can see this list view, which would mean that everybody could see it. And then we can share this list view with a group of users. And we can again choose between roles, roles and subordinates, or public groups if we have public groups set up in there. For now, we're just going to leave it as only I can see this list view, and we're just going to hit save. Now we need to create our filter, so we need to apply a filter to it. So we just go to add filter, and this time we're going to search for amount, and we're going to say that this is low value opportunities. We're going to say we want low value opportunities which are less or equal to, say, 100,000 and we'll just hit done and then we'll hit save. And as you can see, we can only see low value opportunities now. So anything that is less than a hundred thousand pound. But what about if we wanted to create a list view for high value opportunities? We could do that really, really quick. Now we could just go and create a new list view as we've done there, but there's another way because we've already kind of got what we're looking at. We just need to change the amount bit. We're just going to go to the gear icon. We're going to hit clone and then we can start changing it. So we're now going to call this high value opportunities. We'll leave the API name as it is, and we'll leave this list view as only I can see this list view, and we'll hit save. Then what we're going to do is we're going to change this filter. So we just click into it. We've got the amount already, but we're going to change that to greater than or equal to, and we'll say 250,000. And if we hit done and we hit save, you can see that we now have a list view of all our high value opportunities. But what about if we weren't seeing all the information that we wanted to see there? Well, we, we don't wanna be clicking in and out of records. So what we can do is hit the gear icon and we can hit select fields to display. 
and we can just add whatever it is that we want in there. So you can see we could choose between our different fields. So these are all the fields that we actually have on those opportunity records. And we can just pop them across there using that. And then we could just get rid of whichever ones we didn't want. And another huge advantage of this is you can just rearrange the columns as well. So how they're going to display just by clicking up and down. And then if we hit save, you'll see that this has all been changed now. So we've now got a highly customized list view. So before we move on, I just want to quickly summarize list views just so you're fully aware of the power within them. As we know, list views show a list of object records and we can configure the actions. So we have list view actions. We can also configure filters. We can add charts. We can customize list views. We can refresh them and we have the three separate types of list views as well. And as you've already seen, we can set up different settings for those list views. So primarily who can see them and who can't see them. 